My favorite game of all time, Super Mario Odyssey, turns seven years old on Sunday. Gross. I will never not hate the unstoppable, never-ending passage of time. Anyway, every year around this time, I like to make a video about Super Mario Odyssey to celebrate the anniversary of its release. And I'm starting to run out of ideas. However, I'm not out of them yet. This year, I'll be ranking every boss in the game. If I've counted correctly, there are 31 different bosses. This includes all of the rematches for the Brutals and the main bosses in the Mushroom Kingdom, as well as the three Bowser fights. Since there's quite a few to get to, I won't spend a lot of time on any of them. In Dead Last, we have... This is the very first boss in the game, Topper in the Cap Kingdom. Unlike most boss fights in Mario games, instead of three hits to defeat, he only takes two. He would have been easy with three hits, but cutting that down to two makes it insultingly easy to kill him. Ignore that I took damage in this footage. I get that he's meant to just be a tutorial, but would it have killed them to make him take three hits? It's not a big deal at all. It's just kind of weird. This is the rematch of the guy from Seaside Kingdom whose name I can't pronounce. And the point of the rematch fights is for them to be harder. However, they make this one easier for some reason. In the original, you'd have to get down in the water to refill the gushing. However, in this version, since it's always raining, you don't have to refill. I'm sure they completely get rid of all of the ground, which makes it more difficult, I guess? But you never really have any reason to land. However, they kept the giant cup in the middle, so if you need to take a break from holding the button, you can. The cup in the middle also lets you gain extra height, making the fight even easier. And obviously, easy isn't necessarily bad, but when the harder version of a boss fight is easier than the original, that's where I have problems. This is one of the five brutal rematches that takes place on the dark side of the moon. And because you're on the moon, you have lower gravity, which means you can jump higher. And it makes these fights a joke. The reason I'm calling Rango the worst of these is because I feel like his boss fight is the most negatively affected by this. In the original fight, you kind of had to jump on the spring hat thing he throws in order to get enough height to jump on his head. But in this one, you can just jump normally to gain enough height. I mean, you never had to jump on the hat. If you were good enough, you could just do this. The moon gravity just makes it easier to cheat. And even if it wasn't easier, I just don't think the moon gravity works that well for these fights. I think it's really annoying, which is why the next four are all the moon rematches. The low gravity was an okay gimmick for the one kingdom, but once it appeared in two more, I was over it. Bewart's dark side fight is less affected by the moon gravity, but I still think it's kind of annoying. It's slightly more difficult than the original two Spewart fights, but not in a fun way. It's in a go down faster so I can hit him kind of way. Guess. The moon gravity makes it harder to do the speedrun strat, if that's a positive I guess, I don't know. The speedrun strat is basically just jumping on the hat he's under when all of his hats are spinning around. And since you fall a lot slower, it makes it harder to be precise. This one is definitely the least affected by the moon gravity in my opinion. You just have to hit the bomb back at her and then jump on her head. This is the last of the dark side rematches. It's still affected by everybody's favorite, moon gravity. There's another thing that they changed. The original fight in Bowser's Kingdom uses a Pokio to hit a bomb back at its legs and climb up. This one you use a hammer bro. And you don't really have to climb up, you just have to jump up because of the moon gravity. It's not a bad rematch, the idea of switching the Pokio with the Hammer Bro is interesting, but it's just the moon gravity that ruins it for me. If it didn't have that, it'd probably be higher than the original, to be honest. Moon and gravity don't sound like words anymore. This one is really easy to cheat. You're supposed to use the uproot to jump over the lasers, but you can just jump on these blocks and completely avoid them. I do still like the boss, it's really satisfying to hit the glass part with the uproot. It's almost identical, but they added more lasers. They also got rid of those blocks, so you can't cheat it anymore. I know I put the Harriet rematch in Dark Side as the best of those fights, but that's because it was the least affected by the moon gravity. I don't really like her boss fights otherwise. Hitting the bomb back to hit her has just never really been my favorite. It is pretty satisfying when you can do the speedrun strategy of hitting the small bomb back at her instead of having to wait for the big bomb. We're 10 entries down now. This is basically the same thing, just slightly more difficult. She tries to hit you with two giant bombs now instead of one. It's very similar to the first fight against him, which I'll get to soon, but now the floor is slippery because of the ice, and that can get really annoying in my opinion. The rematch against the dragon also makes the ground slippery. The lightning shockwaves are also trickier to dodge this time around. 
This is the first major boss in the game, as in the first one you get a moon from. In order to hit her, you have to knock the hat off of her chain chomp, capture the chain chomp, and then pull the chain chomp far enough away from her so that it creates enough tension to slap her back in the face. It's a pretty good final challenge for the chain chomp capture, which is the main capture of the Cascade Kingdom. It's nearly identical in every way, except now the chain chomp has three hats that you have to knock off instead of just one. I've never been good at this one. You have to capture the Sherm and use it to shoot the glowing spots on the Mecha Wiggler's body. This rematch makes the Mecha Wiggler longer and adds more glowing spots you have to shoot. It splits in two and it's actively trying to attack you, making it harder to dodge. It's definitely more difficult, and hey, at least they didn't just make the ground slippery this time. It's basically how I described it in the last section. There's fewer glowing spots and it doesn't split into two. So it's the exact same as the dark side fight from earlier in this video, but it doesn't have the moon gravity, so it's easily a lot better. This is the first fight with Spewer. He shoots purple, he vomits purple stuff at you that you have to avoid. To hit him, you have to first knock his hat off and then jump on him. It's basically the same as the original. I don't even know what they did to make it more difficult. It's basically the exact same. The arena is bigger, I guess. I don't know why that would make it more difficult. So yeah, these are basically interchangeable. This is my favorite of the brutal battles. You have to wait for him to throw his hat at you and then hit it with Cappy. And then you can jump off of it and slowly float towards him. Or you could just do this. This one is a really creative use for the lava bubble capture. You have to swim around this giant pot of soup and wait for the bird to start vomiting into it. This game has a weird obsession with vomit. You then have to go up the stream of pink puke and hit the bird in the head. The rematch adds spiky snakes into the pot of soup so it's harder to navigate. There's no spike snakes this time, and I don't like spike snakes. You have to use the Pokeo to knock the bombs back at its legs so it falls over. And then you climb up it and destroy the domes. You can do this by either poking them or ground pounding. We're finally at the first Bowser fight. You have to wait for Bowser to throw his hat at you and then throw Cappy at his hat to hit his hat and then jump in the hat and use the robot fists on the hat to hit Bowser. Hat. This is the game's floating hands and head balls. So many Mario games and Nintendo games in general have this. You have to get him to punch the ice crystals on the ground to stun his hand and then capture it. You can fly his hand back into his own face. You basically make him punch himself. It's basically the same, but now there's mummies all over the place. So this means you can't really stand in one place for too long. This is nearly identical to the final boss, but with one major difference, which I'll get to later. Also, the background's purple now. Instead of a small enclosed arena like every other boss in this game, basically, this boss's arena is the whole kingdom. It's oddly similar to the Fury Bowser fights in Bowser's Fury. You have to chase him around the kingdom using the Gushin so you can shoot water at his head and deal damage to him. I still can't believe that this is in a Mario game. This is probably the most insane looking boss in the entire series. It's an extremely realistic looking dragon. These are the two types of dragons in the Mario series. The boss itself isn't too crazy, you didn't have to wait for him to slam his head into the ground so you can climb up his head to do a ground pound on it. You also have to avoid shockwaves. But just the insanity of the fact that this is a Mario character makes it one of my favorites. In first place, we have the final boss. It's basically the same as the rematch from a few entries back. But the reason it's this much higher probably shouldn't even count. It's the section where you have to capture Bowser and escape the moon. But since this technically isn't part of the final boss, it probably shouldn't count. But this is my video, so my rules. So that's every boss in Super Mario Odyssey ranked. I don't know what video I'm going to do next year. I am really out of ideas at this point. I would do a full review of the game, but I'm probably going to save that for the game's 10th anniversary or something. So I might just remake one of my old ones. So there's an idea. I'll rank all of the birds that can land on Mario when he's sleeping. I'm dead serious. Uh -huh.